Hello guys, today I'm going to share with you footage of my interview that I did a couple of months back with this girl named Ann Sophie and hopefully I'm pronouncing her name correctly but she contacted me and she because she wanted to write an article about somebody who's into, into the nofap topic. I was planning to release this interview when her article is done but it's taking a little bit more time than I thought it would it would take so I contacted her and we agreed that I'm gonna just put out this video and once the article is done I'm going to update the description so you can go and follow her on her social media and also check out the article so if it's not there it's not finished yet but if it is then just go and check it out and also I'm gonna leave uh, timestamps in the description so you can click on because it's, it's gonna be a long video so I'll just leave the timestamps in the description so you can just go and click on whatever specific question about nofap you have and that's gonna be easier for you guys to understand and just take in the info anyways here's the interview enjoy so um, you're the owner of the Dominica's YouTube channel uh, yes. uh, which uh, covers a lot of nofap topics yes. um, Yes, uh, the so, majority, yeah. Yeah, indeed. So, um, but to fully understand your motivation, I was uh, really interested in uh, hearing your story from the beginning. So, um, when did you decide to, uh, yeah, to stop masturbating, first of all? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, first of all, um, are we talking about just masturbation or pornography too? Because SnowFap is mainly considered both masturbation and uh, no pornography. Yes, I'm also talking about both. So uh, only uh, also thing. about pornography, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, well, I decided to quit masturbation and pornography uh, when I realized that I had a porn-induced erectile dysfunction with my now ex-girlfriend. So, mm -hmm. uh, and I started this journey uh, pretty much after she left me. And uh, there were other reasons why she left me, not necessarily the bad sex experience, but... Um, I was um, a pretty insecure guy. I was angry a lot of the time, and uh, I was getting a lot of a lot of times emotional uh, when we had the dumb arguments uh, with each other. So I think I blame it on porn, uh, because mm -hmm. um, after I started my nofap journey, everything slowly started to get better. So, uh, but that was the main thing. Uh, why I started this journey is to is because I wanted to fix my erectile dysfunction, and yeah. also back at that time I didn't think that there was like something that much more to this nofap journey. So, like yes, the pretty much the the main thing uh, why I decided to do it is because to fix my ED. Okay, and how old were you in that time? Uh, at that time, I was eighteen years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and then how did you start? Was it easy from the beginning or? Um, yeah. No, it was, well, uh, my nofap journey didn't necessarily start right after my ex-girlfriend left me because uh, I tried it out with my friend in high school when I was 17, 16 years old. Uh, but it wasn't, uh, back then it wasn't this hardcore or more focused. It was pretty much like, just do it for fun. Uh, but. Yeah. Uh, after my ex-girlfriend left me, I really started to think more about this, how pornography affected my life and how I was addicted to it every day. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, uh, I considered it uh, as my start of my journey after my ex-girlfriend left me because then I started to take it seriously. Yeah. Was it something that um, you felt like it changed you? Uh, when, yes, when yes. Yes, uh, every every time somebody asks me like, um, what made you to start your self improvement journey? Because on my YouTube channel and Instagram, I also do about self improvement. But I talk about nofap uh, at, in the majority of my channel because that's the the thing that uh, led me to change, to start adapting all these other different healthy benefits and uh, building productive new habits. Yeah, it yeah. was the core reason. That, yeah. Yes, yes, it was the core reason, yeah. Okay, so, um, yeah, talking about porn, at what age did you discover it? And how was it um, by yourself or friends introduced you to it? Uh, I don't necessarily remember the exact age I started watching mm -hmm. pornography, uh, but I think it was, I, I discovered it myself through internet. Okay, yeah, I think most of us do, but there are also, yeah, some 
who um, get introduced by it by friends and at a very early age sometimes yeah yeah it's, yeah that's that's the main thing that i preach about to because my content is mainly focused more on young men to maybe it's it's not about not to start watching pornography because i think everybody at some point started it or will start it it's where we can't escape it mm -hmm. but uh, we have to learn to control it to um discover when we have when we are addicted yes indeed yeah so in that time when you had some uh, erectile dysfunctions do you remember how it made you feel yes it uh, it was horrible because i didn't feel like a man i mean i was 18 years old at the time and to get erectile dysfunction at that age it's it was every everything was mental uh, there was no thing uh, that was physical because if you get the erectile dysfunction when you're 60 years old for example i mean it's more to blame on your age and not maybe your addictions to masturbation and porn but yes, as is. as mm -hmm. a young guy it 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 felt really bad mm -hmm. yeah then so yeah i think it's something that might happen to a lot of men it's um yeah not only you of course there are so many out there who um experience the same things yeah mm -hmm. so then what do you think about watching porn in the porn industry as a whole um like what are my thoughts of uh like actors por porn porn actors who does the these things like do i agree with them or something or no um, more um like what do you think about um yeah watching just just my opinion on masturbation and watching porn like yes mm -hmm. uh, so um first of all uh what i can say about this is that it's not natural um and mm -hmm. that is why many men get those porn induced erectile dysfunctions uh, because their brain on porn and masturbation experience like it's ex it, the experience the, the sexual experience is similar but it's not the same sexual activity like it would be with a real life human being mm -hmm. so uh, that is my opinion that it's it's not natural and we shouldn't watch porn or masturbate um mm -hmm. And like we as men are taught by porn and masturbation to feel sexual things by looking like with, with our eyes. So mm -hmm. it's pretty much us and the computer screen or our imagination, which is I also consider it uh, porn. porn. Yeah. Uh, and there is no touch in, in the masturbation, uh, masturbation session uh, and watching pornography. And there's, there's only like you looking. And the sex, the sex in real life, it's a lot more different because it's more about the mental connection and the touch with another mm -hmm. person. And when, and that's why men get uh, those porn-induced erectile dysfunctions because they, their brain uh, starts to panic whenever it's time to have sex in real life because it's not what it's used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I yeah. Yeah. Continue. You can continue. Sorry. Uh, no, no, no. It, I just wanted to add that, like, that natural sex only occurs with another human being and not with yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I have a friend who is also against watching porn because he um, noticed that, yeah, he kept searching for the right video. And afterwards, yeah, you, you yes, feel yes. not really energized. And yeah, just, yeah, I, I understand. Yes, that's that's also a very big trap because when some some men say that, for example, they text me on Instagram like, "How can I fix my erectile dysfunction quickly?" and then they add it with, uh, uh, "Well, can I get the, back to watching porn or masturbating regularly again?" Because as mm -hmm. you said, like that, your friend uh, starts looking for the right video. Like, it's it's not natural because. In real life, you can't skip certain scenes. You can't. Uh, it's it's por like I've seen this TED talk where this guy talks about like po porn cameras are interested in the penetration and the action, and it's not about the touch. And that's what messes up with our brains. So maybe at first, when you go on your nofap journey, uh, for example, you get to one month, and then you start to, like you relapse. You watch some porn or you masturbate. And it can start pretty innocently, like watching just people have sex. But then, 
like that's what's so dangerous about this addiction is that it spirals into something more you try to search for that perfect video you um, get into a lot of fetishes a lot of rape stuff um, yeah, because indeed. it's it's more it's it's not about the natural sex that's what i'm saying it's like mm -hmm. your brain just gets this dopamine hit and then it wants more and more and more so yeah. you, you binge watch everything yeah it's it's almost like yeah getting addicted it is getting addicted yes yes it's yeah. it's the same as you for example you eat pizza and then you are hungry for more junk food your brain just craves more and more so yeah. that's that's an addiction like everything else in life like cigarettes and alcohol you can get addicted to those things but i think that the problem is in our today's society is that porn is not looked at as an addiction it's more taboo like mm -hmm. uh, if you if you watch porn like it's normal for uh, guys to watch porn it's normal for girls to watch porn um but but it's not it's it's there there may be some kind of like moderation that i'm not aware of but in my opinion like when i when i speak about these porn addictions i speak about as for men for women yeah. i'm not that sure but for men it's it's there's there's there isn't any moderation because when you watch porn your brain just gonna crave more and more and more you're not gonna get satisfied that's what no. i'm saying yeah. Because when you get an urge, your emotions start to flood in. You think that you like need this thing, you need it. But after your orgasm, that's that feeling goes away, and then you're left with disappointment. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah. What's the biggest difference between how you feel before and after? Oh yeah, that's that's a good question because, as I said, like you get an urge, and the one thing that why many men like feel really sad after they relapse or when they masturbate to porn is because they lose control over themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. They they think that they need it. It's that's why it's an addiction. It's like a drug. Like you need it. You need it, but you don't have a really particular good reason for why you need it. You just yeah. do it, and then after that you start to think clearly because after your orgasm your brain is just ba back um on its path again and then you start to think like why why did i did this and it was yeah. because you got lost in the moment you you forgot yourself and that's why i think it's um uh, like a drug as i said mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah. i totally understand it must be difficult to um yeah then also have the yeah be brave enough to to stop doing it as well because yeah, it's, it's not an easy journey it's it's not it's not at all and it's and it's not uh, all about getting to a certain goal it's like this journey in my opinion is lifelong journey yeah like it's there, there's gonna be a time when you're gonna switch your brain to its natural sexual state and and porn is not gonna be that big of a deal in your life you're not gonna be over always thinking about it or getting many urges that lead you to relapses like you're gonna get to that point in your journey but it's more like realizing that the only way to have truly relationships with other women and a normal healthy sexual relationship uh, relationships is to have sex in real life if you have an opportunity for that and that's pretty much it like don't limit yourself to pornography because no, as i said it's it's it leads you to craving more and more which is never satisfied. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have so many questions. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, maybe before we get into yeah, your personal experience, I was wondering what do you find a bigger uh, taboo? Openly talking about watching porn or saying that you don't watch any porn at all and are against it? Like, um... Can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yes, no problem. So, do you, uh, what do you find a bigger taboo in today's society? So, talking about uh, watching porn, so opening up that you do watch porn, or saying that you don't? I think saying that you don't. Because mm -hmm. every time I had a conversation with uh, people about, the, about this stuff, about NoFap, 
yeah. people are like why like why are you doing this it's like masturbating is awesome <laughs> like <laughs> watching to porn it's it's natural it's normal like mm -hmm. they they say that and when you say like uh when i explain to them all the benefits that nofab gives you and all the struggles that men have with porn addiction uh people are always like 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 they, they have this this confused face because they never came across it mm -hmm. uh, but it happens to so many guys and um about women i can't confirm but with, with so many guys it happens like the erectile dysfunctions um they waste their lives on that they watch porn they have those five seconds of pleasure then they go play video games because like that's that's the other thing that uh, masturbation and pornography leads you as i said to craving more but not necessarily more of like pornography and masturbation but more of a like easier way to get those dopamine sources in your head like mm -hmm. if you Uh, masturbate and watch porn your orgasm then you want to do something more uh, like easier like watch a movie or lay down in bed just watching youtube videos or playing some yeah. video games it's like because you feel an em you feel empty you feel empty and you feel uh, this brain fog that is it's not motivating in any way to you for you to do something productive oh yeah so it's also sort of habit habit that you have to Uh, yeah, like yes. a bad habit. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's it's a habit. Like uh, from my personal experience, uh, when I I remember when I was like 16, 17, when I returned from school, my ritual would be return from school, uh, watch pornography, uh, take a two hour nap, then um, do maybe a little bit of my homework, which I didn't do a lot. Yeah. Um, and maybe play some video games, watch, uh, watch a movie, then uh, watch pornography again, fall asleep and the cycle continues. So it wasn't oh, no. like this thing that like you do once in a month and that makes you feel good uh, because you're happy. It was mostly to escape my problems because at the time I had this ex existential crisis. I, I was sad um, and like this was an escape for me to yeah. watch pornography, to masturbate. It was an escape. Yeah, and then everything started to evolve around yes. yeah, your habit. Yeah. Yes, yes, it's mm -hmm. like uh, I can't, uh, I can't, I wouldn't go a day without watching pornography, without masturbating. It's and it wasn't like this, as I said, like this one once in a while. It was like a habit. It's like smoking. Yeah. Like you, for example, I've had, I've, uh, I've, I started smoking like one year ago or something, uh, and. Uh, mm -hmm because I was just pressured by my peers. Uh, but yeah. I smoked. Uh, at first, it was great because it, it gave you this uh, feeling uh, of like relaxation and letting go of the stress, which, which was okay. But then it became like a habit, like I had to smoke. I, I, didn't, I didn't want to smoke. I didn't enjoy it, but I had to because my brain was trying to uh, push me. And yes. like, good thing that I got rid of that addiction, and but and it was it and it wasn't nearly as hard as dealing with pornography, because as mm -hmm. I said and you said, like it's taboo, uh, and society thinks that it's okay and it's natural. Yeah, yeah, because there are also so many people who, um, yeah, also are against it and don't, yeah, want to, yeah, want to start quitting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, did it also change, yeah, watching pornography and, yeah, masturbating previous time, um, previous, multiple times a day? Um, did it change your view on women as well? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one thing that, like, as I mentioned before, like, you, you, pornography teaches you to love with your eyes, mm -hmm. not necessarily with the touch, because... I, I started viewing women like sex objects, like yeah. uh, I've on the street, like I look at a girl's ass or, or the boobs with my friends. Uh, and that is like, mo not because like I want to, or I might uh, attracted to her that much. It's just like a habit. Like I'm watching pornography on my screen. Lo I'm looking at all those parts uh, in real life. I'm trying, to, uh, I'm imagining having sex with all these girls and stuff like that. Like it's really unhealthy. Mm -hmm. to view it, women like that yeah was it difficult to um 
build a conversation with women afterwards or not? Um, in my experience, like uh, in NoFap, it's uh, when men uh, masturbate and watch the porn, many of men have this antisocial behavior. In my mm -hmm. case, uh, I think it wasn't as big as a problem, but uh, like whenever uh, it would, uh, like the conversation would get flirty or sexual, it would be, uh, I'll get some anxiety. Like yeah. it, it wouldn't be like this normal thing. Like yeah. s sometimes I would just talk to girls like me because uh, I could get them to sleep with me and not because like I'm interested in them or, or something like that. As yeah. I said, it's, it's because of the eyes and just all the pornography like. Yeah, I think so. that's a very normal body response. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you said um, when you were with your friends, so as you began your journey, you might have stumbled upon like a lot of different reactions from your environment, uh, right? What do you exactly mean by that? Yeah, how did your friends and family re react once you opened up about, um, yeah, not oh, not wanting to watch? Well, um, with my family, I, I haven't talked about this that much, um, but with my friends, uh, yes, I started when I started to look more into NoFap and all the benefits it gives you. Um, I've started to talk about this more openly with my friends, who are all uh, who were also like watching pornography daily, masturbating, and some of them uh, like didn't think that it's like okay to not masturbate. But uh, some of them actually joined uh, with me in the challenge, you know. Oh, that's great. Yes, yeah. I still have a few friends. Well, exactly one friend who does this with me and mm -hmm. like he believes in the benefits of it. But uh, other friends that I had and I told them about this challenge, like whenever we would go together doing the challenge, they, I, don't, I don't think that they did it like as something uh, to, to benefit from. They did it just like to see if they can do it. I but see. they weren't yeah. planning on quitting pornography. They were like, okay, let's try one month. And after that one month, we can masturbate again or watch porn. So Yeah, for them, it was more an experiment, yeah, experiment than yeah, a life more, journey or yeah, something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So did you ever experience like peer pressure from friends to uh, relapse? Um, no, no, it, no. I haven't experienced that with them. But there would be times like... Uh, I realized that this journey is more fun for me to alone, not with my close friends, because mm -hmm. like if if I relapse, you know, and then my friend doesn't relapse, you know, I feel anxiety like, wow, I'm not good enough. Like it's it's fun to do this, like with other people uh, that, for example, follow me on Instagram, on, on YouTube, we can motivate each other. Yeah. We can say on what day are we on, but it's different with close friends because uh, when they succeed or maybe I succeed and they don't succeed, it's like they relapse and uh, I didn't relapse. And after a while, like, well, they relapse. So maybe I should do it, too. So uh, it, yeah. like your brain uh, pressures you. Yeah, you start. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mirroring it's, it's, yourself to others in your environment. Something. Yes, it's more like isolated journey. Like mm -hmm. you need to get in, get inside your head and just realize all the benefits and don't look at, at it uh, at it as just an experiment it's just more of a yourself journey you know? yeah i agree as you said before it's something you work your whole life around so you evolve as a person as well yes yes mm -hmm. for sure so um you said you didn't talk about it with your family that much um, um is it yeah. something you want yeah, because I've well, it's 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 not that because I didn't want to. It's because well, like I don't have that great of a relationship with my family. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I guess I guess that's pretty much it. Like I didn't want to share. It. Maybe I was ashamed of it or something. Mm -hmm. Like first of all, like as I said, like it's your journey. I want to prove it to myself. I share it this with people on YouTube and Instagram just because. We can all be in this together and they also like give me tips. I give them tips and 
we all like we are all on this same journey and like you know parents and other uh, like um, more uh, more older people they may not understand yeah. what you're doing here and even I, I for some of my family members I explained all the benefits and why I'm on NoFap but they didn't really get it so like I didn't oh, okay. focus much on explaining yeah. to them mm -hmm. it's also a topic that's not often spoken about yes yes yeah was is this considered a taboo in your country yes yes i and it's not also in my country like it i think it's everywhere because i've been to many erasmus projects this mm -hmm. uh, this year before the coronavirus and uh, oh, great. and uh, from all different countries when uh, i i in every project like when people ask me like what do you do for a living or like uh, what are your hobbies i always said like this youtube and then uh, the uh, the conversation would start about nofap so and mm -hmm. all, and everybody pretty much like had these confused faces like what <laughs> why really? are you doing this yeah like mm -hmm. in, in lithuania in the in, in, in where uh, in here where i live it's it's like really taboo because we're all uh, we are this country <laughs> that uh, is just not maybe accepting of new ideas Mm -hmm. But even though, as I said, like in Erasmus projects from people from I Italy, Georgia, Poland, everywhere, Latvia, people are all also like are not familiar with NoFap and its movement. Ah, okay. Yeah. But that's great. It's then you come out and you openly talk about it on your YouTube channel. Yes, uh, I, th I think that's that's great. And, and I'm not saying like I'm brave or something for uh, talking mm -hmm. about this. When I created my first video about that erectile dysfunction, like I wanted to like train it as like, I don't care what people think because like my close friends saw it and stuff like that. But yeah. it was more of like connecting and relating to maybe other people uh, who are also on this NoFap journey because I, I, I really feel like it's, it's nowadays, it's really okay to share these things uh, with the internet. Uh, because the nofap community are people who are always supportive like they're not hating on you uh, mm -hmm. they want each other to get better and that's what i really like about it it's like there's no not that much anxiety in releasing a video where you talk about not masturbating and watching pornography mm -hmm. like there people are really accepting of that and i really appreciate that yeah, that's great. There's also no judgment, i guess. Yes, like because many of young men go through the same thing. Uh, and yes. when, when when they realize they have a problem, they start to research, to start to uh, look into how to make it better, how to fix it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is this also what you did? Is this how you discovered yes, the yes, NoFap community? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, as, as I said, I first, um, when my ex-girlfriend left me, uh, I started looking into it, like how to fix my erectile dysfunction. And I, and I discovered the NoFab uh, Reddit page where it all originated from. Yeah. I discovered many people sharing their experiences, like uh, get, getting many benefits from it, building productive habits. And as I said, like it wasn't necessarily for the habits, for the benefits to get from NoFap. I did it to fix my erectile dysfunction, but that led me to discover like uh, that there's so much more into this NoFap journey than just fixing your one problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the existence of the group really helped you Excuse me, mm, sorry, what? A no problem. <laughs> so the, the existence of this group really helped you. Yes, yes, yes. It's, it, as I said, like, it's really great that a lot of people are sharing this without any shame. Because yeah. everybody wants to help each other. And that's really great. Yeah, indeed. Luckily, Reddit is also anonymous. So if people don't prefer to yeah, yes, yes. identify themselves, then that's okay. Yes, yes. Like... Yeah. Uh, it for me it wouldn't matter like if it's public or not i'm I, i'm not necessarily really familiarized with reddit because i only uh, logged into it because of the nofap uh, reddit <laughs> i never <laughs> use it for anything else uh, mm -hmm. but because it's just fun to scroll around and just see what people uh, are talking about uh, sharing their own experiences yeah yeah indeed so um 
But I'm really, really interested in your story. So what type of benefits did you experience from quitting? Um, what, what kind of benefits? Yeah. Um, yes. So, uh, I'll, okay, maybe uh, I'll get into the benefits, but I'll maybe tell you what I learned, uh, like from doing everything mm -hmm. that led yeah. me. So like I learned many things and I learned this one thing that it's, it's not a, all about fixing that one problem. So that what led me to discover all the benefits, because at first my uh, only problem was to fix my erectile dysfunction. But uh, because I quit pornography and masturbation over time, I discovered many more benefits like uh, it gets it get rid it gets rid of your um, uh, brain fog. It gives you mental clarity. It gives you focus uh, and it gives you that sense of like being full and more aware of life because when we orgasm we become empty and as i said unmotivated mm -hmm. so when we don't release this built-up sexual energy the the benefits that we can get from it it's to release it somewhere else somewhere more productive so maybe yeah. working on your passion maybe working out um, and that's that's the thing that nofab does you that's i think that is the most important thing about it is that it's like a tool you know many people also on nofap reddit uh, or in the comments tell me tell like nofap like it will change your life um, or they question it if, if it will change their life like it's not about that nofap itself will not fix your life and will not fix all of your problems like it's not a superpower it's it's more of a tool because when you do nofap you for example, get a streak going for two weeks and then you start to feel that sexual energy. And then when you spend that sexual energy, it like gives you motivation. It, give, yeah. it gives you self-confidence. So that's, mm -hmm. I think, the benefits that like NoFab gives you. Yeah, it keeps on giving, I think. Yes, yes. It's like, it, of course, those for that first month or first a couple of weeks are like, the highest in terms of the benefits because you get all the self-confidence you want to socialize uh you may think you start to think that maybe like more women notice you uh mm -hmm. because of your new newly um retrieved the self self-confidence uh, but yeah. uh, over time it starts to wear out but it's like when you, once you do it long enough you realize that the best part is to just sit in this neutral zone uh, when you are not a slave to pornography and masturbation, you control yourself. And, mm -hmm. um, and of course, uh, you also uh, only go up because, as I said, like NoFap is a tool and uh, you start to look into other like more healthy habits that will make you feel better. So maybe yeah. you discover a new diet, you start to exercise. These things give you more happiness in life, more general happiness. And that's why many people like contribute this to NoFap. Like NoFap didn't give you uh, a lot of the benefits, but NoFap like led you to discover those benefits. Yeah. And as you said, it now has, now you more have, you now have more control over your life. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's one, one of the main things. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Wait, before I wanted to go further, I was wondering how long um, did you now stop? Uh, how long? Yes. Uh, yes. So I'm still in the journey, uh, of course, mm -hmm. but uh, I've been on NoFa for two years now. Yeah. And um, that's one thing that I mentioned to people a lot. Like right now, I'm, I think, on day 16 because I relapsed. 16 yeah. days ago but it's not because like just because i relapsed like i got rid of all my progress and stuff like that in those two years like i can safely say now that i'm like i got rid of this addiction uh, because right now if i relapse i do it more of a subconscious like if yeah. i eat a lot of maybe i have one day when i eat more junk food or i just feel s sad and i relapse accidentally and that's like that sucks but i still like mm -hmm. have switched my brain to its natural sexual state now and it's like 
I, I, I'm not that aroused as porn. Like I do it as more of a old, like not healthy habit. Like yeah, it's, you, it's, you already got rid of the yes, yeah, the, the essential, addiction. the essential part. Yes, yeah. I got rid of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, in my opinion, I'm healed now, and that's why I share a lot of these experiences with other people because, like, the, people will always relapse. Like, they, you can. It's 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 gonna be hard and not pretty realistic to say that you're gonna go on this one no fab streak for the rest of your life. Like mm -hmm. the, it will there there's going to happen that time when you slip up, but it's more about the mentality and how you feel because it's it's you the days that you count are more of a like measure. They're not days that for example one person got to day 15 and the other person got to day 90. That person in day 15 could still uh, learn more about it than the other yeah, person because the other person looks at it more or less like a challenge. Maybe to get to the 90 days, okay, I got it. Like there's there's no big point to that. But the other person, like he gets more deeply into this. He thinks about this more. Like he's more aware yeah, of it. That's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, who knows? And yeah, we're all humans. So everyone can relapse. And it's also not necessarily, yeah, as you said, a, a challenge where you have to count the days. But it can help. Yes, perhaps. yes. Counting the days is, is, I think it's essential, though. Even though it's not a, a challenge, it's more of a... To count the days, it's more about the motivation to yourself. Like, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I got to day 7, uh, and uh, on the next week I get to day 14. It's still progress, and it's it, the days still matter some, some, somewhat, but it's not the, the essential thing. Like mm -hmm. it's good to uh, to keep track of your progress. That's what I'm saying. With yeah. with every habit, even though maybe uh, it's it's not about the number that you get to, but it's it's good to keep track of it. Yeah, I agree. It's as a, as a goal, which can also be a goal for fitness, for example. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, but I was wondering, wasn't it very difficult to um, adapt in the first weeks? To no longer yeah masturbate and watch pornography yes because you were so used to it yes yes it's it's it, it was hard the first two weeks always after a relapse are the hardest because that's that's the one thing that when people ask me if they can get back to watching porn uh, or they can get back to like moderation with their masturbation and pornography when you relapse you your brain craves more and that's and it's really difficult at the start because once you relapse okay maybe you have not get, got rid of a lot of your progress but it's still like your brain craves more mm -hmm. you need more you need more and more and uh, it's it's harder for the couple of weeks and, but then yeah. you get back to like your streak you get it going again and then you're okay yeah okay it's a very yeah natural process yeah yeah with ups and downs yeah yeah for sure mm -hmm. so what is your overall opinion on masturbating now did it change yeah it probably of course it changed you but how <laughs> um overall opinion on masturbation and porn now yes uh, well yeah as i said like i still think it's not natural and i still think that there's a lot for me to learn more uh, and I think it's really great to uh, talk about these things to other people more openly now. I think that's my one of my opinions because, like, it's it's about switching your brain to its natural sexual state. But it's if you keep relapsing, if you uh, don't think about this journey more deeply, if you just look at it mm -hmm. as a challenge, you you can get back to like. Either, like right now, I have my erectile dysfunction, my porn-induced erectile dysfunction fixed. But if yeah. I get back to watching porn, if I, it, it, my brain can still reboot to liking things that, with my eyes. As I said, like, mm -hmm. it's more about the touch now and the mental connection. Yeah. That's, that, mm -hmm. that is my opinion. And it's, it's not natural. I can't touch uh, the women I see on um, on porn videos it's like because your brain like thinks you're this king who has sex with all these different women but in reality 
like you're just uh, a sad loser <laughs> sitting <laughs> and just looking at the screen it's 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 not good for you mm -hmm. yeah it makes you think think differently about yes it. and and the because also it's really unrealistic like many uh, porn videos are of these women that like have these huge boobs huge ass like it's mm -hmm. it's fake everything is fake yeah <laughs> there's yeah. not that many videos that uh, focus on the touch which is the natural mm -hmm. sexual thing yeah it is a very different uh yeah unrealistic body image and with men as well yes in the porn. yes yeah. yes because like For men, you are expected to have a big dick <laughs> and mm -hmm. uh, you're supposed to last in bed like for one hour or something. Yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. also not realistic to maybe maybe that's the thing also for women uh, that I could uh, argue about like when watching porn. I, I'm not sure how it could affect them negatively, but maybe if they think that like that's how sex is supposed to be, like mm -hmm. you have to have this huge dick and just to have normal sex yeah but even though that aren't even real standards yes so. it, they're, they're not real standards like most of the time like we are created to reproduce like babies mm -hmm. that's the natural thing and yeah. that's why me not many men last long in bed like uh, i'm not saying that men should just like men should learn to uh maybe satisfy a woman uh with their like Hmm, how do I explain this? Mm. Mm -hmm. Like the mental connection and the touch, as I said, the natural things. Yeah. And uh -huh. these things, I think, should uh, like be shared uh, mutually with uh, yes. yeah. with both the girl and uh, the boy. Mm -hmm. Like there, there are foreplay, many ways to uh, satisfy women and also for the woman to satisfy the man. But it's it shouldn't be like to aim for that orgasm for both parties. Mm -hmm. Like, it's yeah. more about the experience. Yeah, and the feeling of love. I yes, guess. yes. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Looking at people who still want to sometimes watch porn or something. Yeah. How do you... What is your opinion on that? Do you think that's possible? Uh, for men who or want... recommended. Uh, who want to watch, like, porn in moderation or... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um... I don't agree with that. <laughs> As I said, like it's your brain craves more and more every mm -hmm. time. And I don't think there is like a regular uh, chill way to watch porn casually. Like oh, maybe, yeah. maybe if you do it like one time a month or two times a month, um, then you might not have all these like, uh, how do I say? You won't lose all the benefits and maybe your brain will not switch back to like liking porn uh, mm -hmm. and you still can can have healthy relationships but it's still it's a slippery slope like yeah it it's is. it's a, because it gives you so much dopamine that it's really hard to not to do it more often because yeah. you will, and everyone can fall for it yeah eventually. yeah yeah your brain will just come up with it, all these excuses like okay so mm -hmm. you did it twice maybe let's do it again what yeah. does it matter like we're doing this only a couple of times a month like mm -hmm. it's a slippery slope yeah i see so you're now as i believe a very positive role model for model for others uh, because you open up about the discussion via youtube and social media um, do you recommend others to try nofab as well yes yes of course <laughs> that's pretty much <laughs> what i'm about like <laughs> because Uh, for many men, like I, I, I say, this is the most important thing for others to discover is the true reason for why you are doing this. So, for example, many men uh, contact me on Instagram and ask me, like, um, I relapse now. I keep relapsing. What should I do? My nofap journey is not going great. And uh, I encourage them by saying, like, you have to figure out your true reason for doing it. Maybe it, it's about fixing your erectile dysfunction like that's the main thing but maybe you can uh, mm -hmm. write on a piece of paper or in your notepads on your phone like all the other things like it, it can give me a, a new perspective on life yeah. it can give me focus mm -hmm. like you have to come up with all these more reasons like it's it's not the only thing that like there's no goal even though for example i fix my erectile dysfunction now but i have i'm doing the snowfab to um 
as I said, to get uh, focused, to be full, to be more aware of life, because that's yeah. that is my my reason. Maybe for you, for other people, uh, the reason is gonna be different. But you have to find uh, find out that reason because it's gonna help you to curve those urges. Mm -hmm. So that's that's why I want to encourage this to everybody else, every uh, man and maybe woman, because there are also women who are addicted to this. And there is our communities uh, dedicated to women by women. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, the, it gives you a lot of benefits. The nofap journey. And I think it's it's more about like maybe somebody uh, thinks that it's stupid to do these things, but they haven't tried it out themselves. That's like right. yeah, maybe right. they say, oh, well, I'm not addicted. And then they see that they can't go a full week without watching pornography. Mm -hmm. Like maybe you have a problem and maybe you should try try it out. Like yeah. it's, it's, it's not going to be clear the benefits in like not watching uh, porn uh, or masturbating for a day. Like you have to give it time. You have to be patient with this. And then you will yeah. discover all the benefits and all and you will attract all the other healthy habits along the way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so true. <laughs> so lastly, um, what would you like to tell others um, who consider quitting masturbating, but um, who find it difficult? Yeah. So to just yeah, like my advice. Yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, uh, as I said, like the most important thing that I say to people is discovering your true reason. And I think, mm -hmm. it be, and I always say that it's the most important thing. Um, because that will lead you to curbing the urges. Uh, and mm -hmm. my advice would be to not uh, be so urgent or uh, to want to, to do this fast and to do it quickly. Like, as I said, as you go along, you discover the NoFab is a tool that lets you discover all the other healthy habits in your life. And it's not about the destination. It's the journey. Like many yeah. men, if they want to fix their erectile dysfunction, they've been watching porn their whole lives. And then they ask me if they can fix themselves in two weeks or three weeks. It's not about the number. Like it's different for everybody. Maybe yeah, one. Yes. Maybe somebody's addicted to porn, but they can heal themselves in two months. And others mm -hmm. uh, have to take years in order to do that. Like, yeah, that's that's my advice. And the other advice that's pretty much more specifically to people with erectile dysfunctions is is that don't test yourself <laughs> because <laughs> many, many men like say, uh, well, I don't I don't feel like my dick is working. I don't feel like I'm getting uh, morning wood. I don't feel like I'm getting erections. Maybe I should test myself with mm -hmm. masturbation or porn. <laughs> Don't yeah. ever do that because if no. when your brain goes to thinking like that and uh, it wants you to watch pornography to test yourself, it's it's just like excuses in your mind to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. one thing, piece of advice. Mm -hmm. I think I'm very sure that it's also sometimes difficult to control your mind as well. Yes, control yes. your thoughts. Yes, and oh, you actually reminded me. The other advice would be to just. Uh, when some people say that they keep relapsing and like their nofap journey is not going well, I would suggest to one time when you have an extremely big urge to just avoid it. Like it's easier said than done, but maybe mm -hmm. if you just sit with that urge for a couple of hours or maybe even the whole day, then you will, after the urge is over, which it will eventually go, after it's mm -hmm. over, you will feel like like a new person, like that's what I discovered because um, you realize that you can do this and it's not because you don't act upon the every urge. Like you get one urge, you uh, avoid it and that will give you motivation to avoid the next urge and then the next and, yeah. then, and, that's, and that's the cycle because if you relapse on one urge, then on the other, it keeps repeating. You keep relapsing whenever you get one urge. Like you have to yeah, just sit, yeah. sit through at least one because then you will discover how how actually in control you are yeah and then these small victories will eventually yeah, yeah form uh, build, you to build up to bigger results yeah yeah indeed mm -hmm. 
Is there something else that you want to add that you find very important to uh, share? Not necessarily. I think I covered most of everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. As the okay. maybe the in conclusion, I'm going to repeat one more time that yes. <laughs> you have to figure out the reason for doing it. Because as I said, many people wa look at it as a challenge. And it's not the challenge. You have to figure out the true reason for doing it. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. I think it's very inspiring that you do this. No, thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it started with like, uh, yeah, a personal journey, but then you, because you talk about it with others, you make it a very normalizing topic. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, it's it's personal for everybody and everybody's going to get different benefits and different different struggles. But in uh, at the end of the day, we're all in this like together still. And yes. we can all share yes. our similar experiences with others to help others out. Mm -hmm. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you so um, much for having me. Yeah.